Hello friends, this week's devotion is titled Magnificent Multiplicity, Part 2. Two weeks ago on June 29th during quiet time, I heard the melody, Canon and D, in my head. It looped and looped until finally I paid attention. I realized Holy Spirit was revealing something to me. This was the bridal march tune at my wedding many years ago and the favorite of many other brides. So I asked the Lord what he desired I know. I believe he impressed upon my heart an invitation to those who are willing and ready to walk in greater holiness, to meet true majesty, which is Christ's character and nature, to receive a greater exchange of intimacy, power, and authority. Holy Spirit also brought to mind that a bride doesn't look back when she walks down the aisle toward greater sanctum. Rather, she looks forward with anticipation and captivation, not giving thought to anything God finished behind her. I believe this action is purposed and necessary for building God's kingdom inside of us as he sends us out on more complex exploits to minister to the scattered ones. In Holy Scripture, scattered is the opposite of spread. In Webster's, spread is another word for multiplicity. Two synonyms of multiplicity are abundance and harvest. In part one of this series, we saw how the Israelites spread in number to the extent that their enemy of worldliness could not stand them, and that with God's help, worldliness could not even stand against them any longer. I believe that as God spreads his kingdom on new levels and layers, his made-ready bride who is obedient to have and to hold God's victory hand of intimacy, power, and authority will be the great harvesters and reapers among the crowd. God is gathering and preparing his ecclesia, which is Greek for his called out ones, even higher, to bring deliverance by his spirit to the achlos, which is Greek for crowd, mob, or multitude. The example Holy Spirit highlighted to me is in Matthew chapters 9 and 10. In Matthew 9, 36, the King James Version says, But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad, as sheep having no shepherd. Multitudes in this verse is derived from the Greek word eho, which is spelled like the English word echo. Eho means to have, hold, and possess. We know that to faint means to lose heart, give up, grow weary, become exhausted, and lose inner strength. Without Jesus, the crowd in Matthew 9.36 could not go the distance in their race or destiny on earth. Jesus heard this crowd echo a desperate cry. He knew they needed a touch of his majesty to overcome the false power that held them and possessed them. This crowd needed to be loosed from the grim reaper. They needed the lifeblood of Jesus, his strength and protection. They needed Jesus' harvest reapers to help them. So Jesus, in his great compassion, turned to his harvesters and reapers, which were his disciples at the time, and said to them in Matthew 9, 37 and 38, The harvest is huge and ripe, but there are not enough harvesters to bring it all in. As you go, plead with the owner of harvest to thrust out many more reapers to harvest his grain. I believe this is both our prayer and our answer for this hour. I believe God has highlighted this crowd in scripture to move our hearts with compassion like his, to echo his calling to us as his bride, as an invitation to reach out to help the scattered ones know his truth and love. The Lord's strategy involves spiritual reproduction and collaboration, the backbone of reaching multitudes, which is illustrated in Matthew 10 verse 1. It says, Jesus gathered his twelve disciples and imparted to them authority to cast out demons and to heal every sickness and every disease. Here we see the sovereign grace power of God's kingdom at work through his people. We see resurrection life on earth as it is in heaven. We see solidarity salvation, and invitation. It's what the Lord empowers us to do when our confidence is fully in Him, when we know Him as able and we are willing and equipped to go in faith and be sustained by Him. In Matthew 10 verses 5 through 8, Jesus commissioned His disciples to go out into the ripened harvest field to find the lost sheep and preach the message that heaven's kingdom realm is accessible, close enough to touch. Jesus tells them that freely they have received the power of the kingdom, so freely release it to others, to heal the sick, deliver people from demons, and raise the dead back to life. 
So are you ready to collaborate with God for the kingdom in fellowship, power, and authority? As we submit to Jesus to be his hands and feet in a greater way, we can expect to be strengthened in him too. We can expect to receive power from on high that will cause our spiritual enemies to respond according to his word through us. We can expect Holy Spirit to flow like a river. When the Lord revealed this word to me, he also issued a warning. Remain on course with God no matter what. Turn from all foolishness, choose wisdom, and enter into the Lord's banquet with him to feast on all he offers. Jesus and you make for a perfectly synchronized double wide door of imitation. You are a light fueled by his oil as you carry his spirit of glory. So be strong in him, full of him, and do not let others provoke you to compromise by taking advantage of your compassion. Do not let the enemy provoke you away from Holy Spirit and his anointing. Ephesians 6.10 affirms this by saying, Now, my beloved ones, I have saved these most important truths for last. Be supernaturally infused with strength through your life union with the Lord Jesus. Stand victorious with the force of his explosive power flowing in and through you. To God be the glory.